Hello online students, it's time for IV Pediatric Calculations. I can see the excitement on your face. Not really? <laughs> well, it is an exciting time. Pediatrics is one of those things that's a specialty medicine that you really have to want to take care of a family as well because once you're taking care of a pee, you're taking care of the whole family. Uh, there are some basic things that you need to know when you are taking care of a pee as far as figuring IV calculations and some other things. So if you'll get your peds book out, a calculator would be handy, pencil or pen, and a piece of scratch paper. We're going to work through a few things and by the time we're finished, if you still don't feel comfortable, then let me know. Miss uh, Enlos is going to be teaching um, parental therapies, advanced infusion therapy, and she will be giving you a IV therapy module to do, and there will be four pediatric uh, IV calculations on that, and it will come from this content. So if you understand this content, you should do well on those questions. All right, without further ado, we will get me off of here and we'll get started. All right, IV calculations, uh, when we're talking about uh, pediatrics, uh, again, a very exciting time. If you will look in your book on page 764 in the PEDS book, there is a handy dandy formula, just like Blue's Clues, the handy dandy formula instead of the handy dandy notebook. It is table 24-1, daily maintenance fluid requirements. Uh, you can see there that there's body weight in kilograms and the amount of fluids per day. So you always have to calculate the weight of the child in kilograms, and it says a hint. Uh, of course, you know to divide by 2.2 to convert pounds to kilograms. So when you divide about 2.2, you should always get about half of your poundage to equal your kilograms. If you don't, you did something wrong. So if you look down and about half, if your kilograms aren't about half your poundage, something's not right. All right, so what is this handy dandy formula? You will need to know this forever. For one reason, when you walk into a room and you see a PEDS IV, D5 and a fourth at 42 cc's an hour, how do you have a clue if that's even in the ballpark of the right fluid amount or not. Well, it's this handy dandy formula. So for the first 10 kilograms, they will get 100 mils per each of those 10 kilograms, okay? So the max they're gonna get is 1,000 because if they weigh 10 kilograms and they're getting 100 mils per kilo, it would be your 10 times your 100 or a max of 1,000. For the 11 kilograms to 20 kilograms, you're going to take your 1,000 that you got up here from your first 10, and then anywhere between 11 and 20, you're going to multiply that times 50 mils per kilo. So anything over 10 up to 20 is multiplied by 50 mils per kilo. Then anything over 20 kilograms, you would have to go back. The max you can get here is 500. So you would go 1,000 plus your 500 would be 1,500 max. And then plus whatever's left over is 20 mils per kilo for each kilogram greater than 20. Whatever you get is going to be a total for a 24-hour period, and you're going to have to divide that by 24 hours to obtain the rate in milliliters per hour. And you will have to know this formula forever. We will work some here in just a little bit to make that make more sense. So assessment is key. Whenever you're looking at an IV rate, there's several things you need to keep in mind. Let's say you figure the IV rate and it's 10 over what it's supposed to be. Do you necessarily run and call the doctor immediately? Oh my goodness, he made a mistake. He's 10 over. No. You got to go in and look at things. Critically think. Let's do some clinical reasoning. What was the reason for admission? Was it nausea, vomiting? Have they been doing this for three days and they're severely dehydrated? Are they MPO on top of that? What is their diet status? Look at their lab. What's their sodium? The sodium is going to tell all there is to know uh, a lot about dehydration status. Look at their vital signs. Are they showing signs of being hypovolemic? And what type of solution are they on? Is it causing shifts? So you have to critically think about each individual patient before you actually call the physician. Go back and dig in there before you make those uh, decisions because the key uh, keen assessment skills is critical when taking care of pediatric patients. 
So let's work through some of these. First of all, we have Amy Smith, who's a six month old. And when we get ready to, with pediatrics, you always round to the nearest 100th, okay? So we have a 22 pounder who is admitted with dehydration, has an IV of D5 and a 4 at 42 cc's an hour. Is this a safe rate? So I've walked in this room, I have a six month old who weighs 22 pounds and they've got an IV going D5 and a 4 at 42. Well, let's go back to our handy dandy formula. For the first 10 kilograms, they could have uh, up to 100 mils per kilo. Well, how do we know how many kilograms they weigh? Well, they weigh 22 pounds, so 22 divided by 2.2 is 10 kilograms, okay? So if we go by our formula, up to the first 10 kilograms, they have 100 mils per kilo, so that would be 10 times 100, that would be 1,000 mils. Now remember, that's per 24 hours. So if I wanna know hourly, I've got to take 1,000 and divide that by 24. And I would get 41.66 or 42 cc's an hour. So is this a safe rate? She's got D5 and a fourth of 42 going. And the answer for this one would be, even though it's 41.66, yes, this is a safe rate, okay? Let's look at our next example. Uh, one of the things you need to know, because you're going to see this frequently, is sometimes it will say pounds and ounces. Now, you don't take 35.9 divided by 2.2, because now you've got ounces and pounds, and you've got to convert everything to poundage. So, we know there are 16 ounces in one pound, right? And we're wanting to know how many uh, poundage we're wanting to convert this to poundage, so how many pounds is nine ounces, okay? So you would have 16X is equal to nine. You do always divide both sides by 16 is what you end up doing. So you got nine divided by 16 equals 0 0.56 when rounded to the nearest hundredth. So now I would take 35.56 divided by 2.2. So 35.56 divided by 2.2 is equal to 16.16 kilograms, okay? So, for, go back to our handy dandy formula. For the first 10 kilograms, minus 10. So 16.6 minus 10 would leave 6.16 kilograms. So for the first 10, it would be 10 times 100 mils per kilo, or 1,000. For 11 through 20, it's 50 mils per kil. So I had 6.16 left over. So 6.16 times 50 is 308. So now I add my 1,000 to that. And I have 1,308 per 24 hours. So I would divide that for, by 24. And I would get 54.5. So is 54 cc's an hour a safe rate for this child? And the answer is yes. Now I would want to watch this child um, because they have been admitted with RSV. You know, I want to see what kind of intake and stuff they're having because uh, we wouldn't want them getting too much fluid. All right, now let's take uh, Sandy Harbin. So the first one was okay, the second one was okay, and the third one. Sandy Harbin is a six-year-old who weighs 55 pounds, who was admitted with acute appendicitis, who's a fresh post-op, who has an IV of normal saline at 70. Is this safe? All right, so let's take 55 pounds divided by 2.2, and that'll give us 25 kilograms, okay? For the first 10 of that, minus 10 leaves 15. For the first 10, they're going to get 1,000 mils. For the next uh, 10, they're going to get 50 per each kilogram, so minus 10 again, so that would be 50 times the 10 would be the 500 max for the next, and then for anything remaining, which in this case is five, would be 20. So five times your 20 would be 100. So we have 1,600 total divided by 24 is 66.66. Now, the IV is going at 70, so that is a little bit over, and we're worried when it is a little bit over with children. But again, let's go back and do what I talked about early and use clinical reasoning. They were admitted with acute appendicitis. They are a fresh post-op. They have lost fluids. 
They were probably dehydrated when they come in if they were admitted with acute appendicitis. And their NPO uh, more than likely right now. So is going three over okay when you've got all these other factors? And yes, I, it is okay. I would not be concerned at this point with that data that I have. Okay, so number one, number two, and number three would all be safe. But again, don't forget to assess the situation always before calling the doctor. And if in doubt, call the doctor. There's three main differences between adult and pediatric dosages. Dosages are dramatically smaller with children. So you shouldn't be getting drawn up two or three, uh, you know, um, syringes full of medication to give to any pediatric. Usually it's a much smaller dose. Use of safety devices, solucets, buretrols, arm restraints are all common. Uh, and we'll go over this more when we do a sim lab day. Dosage calculation is the same as adults except we use kilograms instead of pounds for medications. We calculate to the nearest hundredth and we always, always, always double check all of our meds with another health care provider. Yes, even Tylenol. So, if you had any trouble with figuring out the drop rate, you need to get with me. So let's move on to figuring uh, the amount of drops per minute. And this is the same as for an adult. We've got an antibiotic dose of 50 milligrams. It's been diluted in 100 mils, and it's infusing over 60 minutes with a micro drop factor of 60. Okay, calculate the flow rate and drops per minute necessary to deliver this medication. Here is the formula you need to memorize for drops per minute. The amount of your solution times your drop factor divided by your hours in minutes. So in this case, the total amount was 100 mils, the infusion time was 60 minutes, the drop factor was 60 drops per minute, so you take 100 times 60 divided by 60 equals 60 drops per minute, so your answer is 100. That formula is straightforward, the amount of solution times the drop factor divided by the hour in minutes. Another one. Tagamet, 250 milligrams IV piggyback every six hours. The recommended dose, if you look in the pediatric book, says five to 10 milligrams per kilogram every six hours. Is this a safe dose then if a child weighs 80 pounds? Well, step one, always convert. So 80 divided by 2.2 is 36.36 kilograms. Well, 36.36 kilograms times five, because they can have between five to 10 milligrams per kilogram every six hours. So I would take my 36.36 .36 times five, and that would be 182 milligrams. They can have up to 10 milligrams per kilogram, so I would take my 36.36 times my 10, and that would give me 363. So my safe dosage range for this patient is 182 to 363 every six hours. If I go back and look, the patient's getting 250 every six hours. So yes, it falls right almost in the middle, and this would be considered a safe dosage range. So you may have to figure safe dosage ranges. If you have any problems with this, let me know. It's just a few pointers in closing. Never assume I know is being done. You always want to go in first and make sure they have an I know sheet or a piece of paper or someone is writing this down. Make sure they're still ha saving urine and diapers because if they've been in there two or three days, it only takes one nurse not doing it and they assume that they've quit doing it. So always go in right off the bat. Hey, don't forget we're doing I know. Here's a piece of paper to keep up with it. I'll be coming in and checking uh, frequently how much they're drinking and if they're putting out um, how many diapers. Make sure there's plenty of diapers in the room. Make sure they've been pre-weighed, and we'll be going over that and showing you how to do that again in the first sim lab day. Ask someone how to weigh diapers if you're unsure, but again, by the time I get through going over it, you ought to be okay. Keep track of I know throughout the day, not only at the end of the day, but you want to assure that you are doing that throughout the day. You don't want to wait till 12 hours at the end of a shift to go in and see the babies have one wet diaper all day or that they've only taken in one bottle all day. It's a little late for a pee to be figuring that out. 
If you have a pediatric patient in a crib, never, ever let the crib down and walk away. One hand on the patient rule at all times. Unfortunately, in the past, we have had that happen and the baby fell flat on a concrete floor. Um, you always, always, always one hand on the patient rule. Check all your meds with another nurse or instructor for accuracy. Yes, even Tylenol when it comes to peds. I have included a YouTube for you to watch here. Uh, this is a link on a type of infusion a syringe pump. It's not the pump that White River uses, but it is similar. Uh, if you have a pediatric getting an antibiotic that comes up in a syringe, you will have to use a syringe pump. Make sure you look at the policy and procedure that you set it up with the primary nurse the first time uh, you do it for accuracy. Make sure the weight was done and recorded first thing in the morning and you don't want to catch again this late in the day. So always, if they're on daily weights, make sure that was done before you start. Remember, you're taking care of a family, not just a child, patient-centered care. Remember your theorist and apply their concepts throughout the day. Check the IV site. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Comes in threes. Check the IV site is ordered and no more than two hours in the saw you set at once. Again, I'll be showing you what a saw you set or a viratrol is uh, when, whenever we have our uh, sim lab day. Report any changes to the primary nurse as soon as possible. And if in doubt, A-S-K. Always ask. All right, I've got three more here as far as safe dosage range for IV therapy to tell me if they're safe or not. Uh, practice makes perfect. So if you will figure these three, uh, what you got, the actual answer, uh, like, I, you know, it says D5 and a fourth at 44. I got D5 and a fourth at 40 cc's an hour. Uh, this would be a safe range, or this would not be a safe range, okay? So, uh, again, just zip me a little email in Blackboard uh, for these three, and I'll follow up with you and let you know if you're on the right track or not. If you have any other questions or concerns, don't hesitate to get in contact with me. Thanks, and have a blessed, wonderful day.